Hey there bibliophiles and those raising bibliophiles. Today's book review is book number four of the Dark is Rising series, or sequence, I should say, by Susan Cooper. And the fourth book is The Grey King. And in this particular book, I'm going to assume that the magical aspects sort of have not bothered you thus far. Or if this is all new to you, then I would definitely go back and look at my reviews for book one, two, and three. This particular book did receive the Newbery Award. Um, so if you are one of those that you try to read a lot of the Newbery Award winners, or you have a student who loves to read those, then just so you know that this is one of those books. If you're following these book reviews and you just kind of want to see where the story ends up before you decide if you want your reader to read that, that is totally fine too. So if you remember or if you've watched my other reviews, so book one, just to recap, focused on Simon and Jane and Barney. Book two was Will. Book three, we see all of them come together. And book four is really just on Will again. The book opens, Will has had a serious illness and he needs to kind of go away and have some time to just rest and recover after he's come out of this very terrible illness. And he is sent to Wales to stay with family friends and to recover. And so while he is here, he is actually tasked with doing the next part or the next phase of his quest. Remember, they're fighting. The light is trying to fight the dark and to keep the dark from rising, to keep it at bay and to protect the world of men. And in this, he's looking for a golden harp. And his job is to awaken the sleepers, whoever they may be. He's unsure, so he has to sort of figure that out. Um, family, friends, and most of the other characters in this novel, they are all shepherds. And mysteriously, several of the sheep are being um, maimed and even killed. We have one character, Bran, and he's the son of a field hand. And he has this very um, sweet dog that's his companion. And unfortunately, a nasty neighbor, Mr. Pritchard, um, believes that it's Bran's dog who has um, been the one attacking the sheep. And as the story unfolds, um, Will discovers that the dark is actually working in this region and is trying to keep him from succeeding his in his quest, of course. Um, the mysterious gray wolves um, are the ones who are actually responsible for what's happening to the sheep, but they're able to shape shift. If that kind of makes sense, they're able to disguise themselves as other animals. So that's why Pritchard believes that it was Bran's dog, and later he believes that um, Mr. Rowlandson's dog is the one who's now responsible. You do see a lot of those continued dark elements in this particular book. There are such things as wear stones that are placed in certain places where the dark is then able to influence the people and what is taking place in that area. And they're able to spy on people. So kind of keep that in mind. There's this like stone that's, you know, the dark has power over. Um, I will give a little bit of a spoiler. Will does accomplish his quest. And what's revealed is that Bran is sort of an outsider in this story. He is albino. And um, so that's a whole nother element that's like weird things are going on with him. But what you find out in the story is that he's actually the son of King Arthur. And so he's been brought out of his time that he originally lived in. Um, Merriman brought him out and brought him to that time where Will is sort of, like he's lived there the whole time, right? Will hasn't been there, but I guess like to that century, that time period, in order that he would be protected. Um, because one of the men who is of the high magic, who's sort of outside some of these things, he is actually King Arthur. At least that's the way that it reads. And um, that's who they encounter when Bran's helping Will to retrieve the golden harp. And so there's a lot more action in this particular book than in the other books so far in the series. So it's de this particular one is definitely a faster read. I can see why it was a Newbor Newbery Award winner. Um, we have a lot of compelling and intriguing characters. The story moves along quickly. And so you'll see a lot of that. If your reader didn't care for the other ones, um, this may be one that they care more for. Definitely go back and I invite you to go to my website or to look in the link below and see um, how to get to the, the full review of the book. That way you have an idea of some of the more particular things in the story. Like Gwen, um, 
show she's the one who brings Bran forward. You find out later this is Guinevere. Um, one of the things in the story that was really good that I liked. So Owen is the one who Bran believes is his father. But the way that it's told, like Owen took care of him. Um, he loved Gwen in the time that he had known her. And he really was devoted to caring for Bran um, in the story. And so that's a really good aspect. You will see the word damn mentioned a couple times in the story. And so, like, for example, Pritchard is referred to as a damn lunatic, um, just to make you aware that those sorts of things are in there. Again, um, I really would encourage you to kind of go back. You see this battle of light and dark throughout the story. I will also tell you that if you have a child who's very sensitive to um, animals, so when Koffal is killed by Pritchard, that's Bran's dog, um, it is really tragic and sad. And you can see the quotes um, or some of the, the aspects of that presented in my written review. So you can see that for yourself and see if that description is too much for your reader. And again, when Pritchard's trying to go after Mr. Rowland's dog, you'll see that again. Um, again, in this particular book, like some of the other ones, you see that mentioning of the emptying of the mind. And so again, I just want to word of caution with that because we know that as believers um, in the Lord, that those are, you know, we meditate on his word. We're filled with the Holy Spirit. And so um, know that that's in the book. And kind of take that um, for what that's worth. And I let you know like on what page in my review the, the printout um, of that. So if that's something you want to make sure that you're checking with your reader or talking with them about that you have that ability. Um, overall, I thought the story was good. I think it presents good themes and good ideas that are worth discussing. Um, especially this idea of shape-shifting spirits and emptying your mind. Um, and then also... Um, just this continued battle over light and dark. I will post a review of book number five once I finish that, and then that will complete the series. And hopefully that will give you parents a good idea of whether or not with each of these books in the series that this is something that you would like your child to read or if this is something you would choose to abstain from as a family.